house to home. Presented by Remax Diamond Realty. Welcome back to the work week, even though it's Tuesday. But you know what that means? That means we are talking about real estate, how you can best manage it, how you can make sure that you are getting the best bang for your buck and that your investment is a sound one and that you can hold it on for a very, very long time. And who better to navigate through these very often treacherous waters, but still uh, nice, nice, gentle waves than Liz Duenas and Gina Campos from Remax Diamond Realty Guam. Ladies, I tried to use a, a boating like analogy just to say like, you know, the waters, the waters are calm. Every once in a while, they get choppy out here on Guam and everything. But, uh, but what is the state right now? Yeah. <laughs> what is the state right now of if we were going to, uh, to surf? Uh, what is the state of the, of the rental market? Let's, let's just say for, uh, for residential potential well, tenants. Yeah. yeah, well, what we wanted to do is kind of um, give an outline of what, if you're looking to rent, Jason, mm -hmm. what do you need? What do you need to approach a landlord? Um, but of course, you call, contact a, your realtor and they will assist you in the process. Now, if you're going to rent, they're, typical, they're documentation that a landlord would normally ask for. Uh, they would first, you'd have to fill out an application form. And that is critical because they will do a background check. They'll check your previous landlord to see how were you as a tenant? Did you maintain the property or did you trash it prior to your departure? Uh, so that application form is critical. Uh, the other thing- So you do uh, leave a snail trail if, if you're a bad tenant. Yes, definitely. Okay. Most definitely. And even, and even though you realtors are, are technically competitors and everything like that, you still all work together because in, invariably, like you will wind up like crossing paths at some point. And, you know, you, it's a very collegial community. That's right. Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> so the tenant would have to provide uh, copies of their last two pay stubs, uh, their financial. We want to know, is their income uh, capable of supporting the rent? So when you have, let's say you're renting uh, a property and it's a thousand dollars, so your income you you times three, so that'll be three thousand. You should be able to be taking home uh, an income to support that uh, the rental amount of one thousand. Mm -hmm. And then of course, although you're bringing that in, you need monies to take care of your personal needs. So landlords are careful. They want to make sure that if we take you as a tenant, that you'll be able to pay your monthly rental because bear in mind, landlords have mortgages to pay. They've got other expenses as well. So the landlord has to look out in their interest. And in order to do so, there's a formula they would look at in terms of the tenant's capability of renting the property. So they, do, they definitely do background checks. And in some cases, they also do credit checks because a credit check will determine, have you been paying your bills on time? Mm -hmm. And that, yeah. that too is a metric that, that follows you around and is publicly available. That's right. Oh, yeah. 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 So, so Gina, it looks like there, there's two things that I would need to you know, shore up or prepare, right? Because I, I got to tell you, ladies, when I first got my very first apartment, I didn't know what the hell I was doing. I'm going to be completely frank and honest with you. I met with the realtor who was showing me the place and I just said, you know, I don't have any any past history of renting before, so I gave her uh, police clearance. I gave her even a health record. <laughs> I said, "Here's here's Aww. here's here's two copies of of my check stubs, just in case you need to do that, because I'd only like purchased cars before." And I mean, I had every single thing under the sun because I really wanted that apartment. But yeah. but now I know it's basically financial and character, right? Yeah, you, you know, and and because the market's getting so, gosh, Chase, it's been competitive for for a year now, if not a little bit longer, and you can see that the prices are going up. And what I want to tell the community is, the realtors don't price properties; mm -hmm. we give advice to the owners, and the owners decide. Ultimately, the owners will decide what their rent asking price is going to be. I like that. We don't a, set prices; we give advices. We, yeah. oh, I like that too. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, it's, you know, and, and I, I, I have some owners where I've, I tell, I tell them what's going on in the market and they've said, you know, this, so here's the market. It's by, you know, the market is driven based on demand. So the market's up here. And I've had some owners say, you know, I can see that the market's up here, but most of the people in my building and generally speaking, the working class community on our island, if they're not subsidized, 
their budgets like here. And so I'm willing to be here. So, you know, we're fortunate that we have owners that that are willing and are able because able is the true uh, Mm -hmm. key here. They're able to offer the below market rents just to help the community. And I, you know, can't thank them enough for being that way. And we're lucky enough to work with people like that. But in terms of the owners, you know, we, we, we try to look out for both, both mm-hmm. sides. When tenants call us and they're asking us for advice, the reason that we go over the process with them is we're trying to protect them too. We don't want them to move into a unit that they cannot afford. It's going to stress them out. You're not they're setting them up for failure. Hmm. I, we absolutely don't want to set them up for failure. And so that's why we give them as much advice as we can. We try, if we can see that they're not, you know, the general rule is three times the rent. So you can look at your income. And if you're making, if your income is, you know, like Liz pointed out, if, if you're making at least three times the rent, I'm noticing that more and more realtors, more and more owners are using that as a general rule. Mm-hmm. Your income has to be three times the rent. And I think it's, it, it's actually a, a good, um, it's a good number because, you know, other than the rent, you have everything else you need to pay for. And, and so we're trying to make sure you can afford it. And now, for the landlords, they need, they need to check these things too. You know, you mm-hmm. may not be working with a realtor. If you're not working with a realtor, you should be checking that. You should check their previous uh, you know, their previous residents and make sure, as Liz said, that when they right. moved out, not only did they take care of the unit, but they, they did not move out, leaving any balances with that previous landlord. These things and, are key. And that being the case, Liz, even though money makes the world go round, right? And ultimately, it's my ability to to pay my rent. If, if it should be between myself and another tenant, but, you know, I'm just on the cusp. I mean, I could technically like afford um, to pay my rent. But, you know, again, I was, I was going back to the thing I was talking to Gina about, right? Finance and your character, you know, your track record. If I have a history of always paying my rent on time and in full, I never default. I never flake. I'm genuinely a really good person. I've, I've kept my, my rental units in very, very good shape. Can that maybe nudge me like over the, have you, have you seen that before in transactions? We've seen it where you're right on the cusp. So when we call the previous landlord and they say, you've been very good, you've paid your rent on time. It does make a difference uh, for you to have that edge to get in. Now, we've had cases where the tenant was short. However, a family member could serve as a guarantor, someone that would say, hey, if they don't pay their rent, you can come after me. So that's another uh, thing that uh, landlords will look at. Well, you're short. You don't have enough. But if you have a guarantor, and sometimes parents will do that. Mm-hmm. or a close family relative would sign as a guarantor. And then if, if the uh, tenant is short, that individual will step in and make up the difference. Well, I got, I got to tell you the way, I mean, you know, my, my Nino, God rest his soul. He, I could honestly see him being my guarantor, but then he could tell my landlord, okay, if my godson does not pay, you come <laughs> after me and then he's going to be, and I'm going to go after my godson then. And I, I wouldn't want that. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's, that's how I was raised. It's like you make sure you pay your bills on time. Well, another way, another way that they've done it is, let's say you're uh, you're still short. Mm-hmm. Sometimes tenants will pay six months in advance, where they'll pay but, six months in advance. Yeah. yeah, of course, a landlord can't request that because in the Landlord Tenant Act, that is oh, one yeah, of the items right. that was put into yeah. the Landlord Tenant Act. Oh, okay, so if if that is if yeah, that is the case. Not allowed to ask for rent in advance um so landlords are not allowed to ask for that but they can't, they can't even make a deal they can't say you know you know boy if you're willing to pay six months i'll give you 10 percent off the total by law it's it's not you you're legally cannot okay. do that that's so if one there's of the, any and see that was one of the things that we opposed in the landlord tenant act because we we've we've you know we're on the side that can see the whole picture and we've seen Students, for instance, we've had situations where students, of course, have no income. So the parents or whoever is supporting them will say, listen, we'll pay the rent up front for a year. You know, can you just let our kids stay there? There's no room at at the dorms or they can't stay at the dorm for one reason or another. And so we were, you know, landlords were making accommodations and doing that. 
but now you're not allowed to. So what do you do? I mean, you know, that's something you have to figure out. So mm. um, it, it is if a tenant insists, I'm sure landlord's not going to say no. You know, if a tenant is able, maybe they have a family member that could do that for them. They I got don't some graduation that. money and they want to, they want to make a deal or yeah, have an or arrangement. Or, and they say, yeah, that's right. And I just and pay the next 90 out. days. And would you be willing to knock it, knock a little bit off the top? And, but, that, that, but that always has to stem from the tenant though. The, the landlord can never initiate that conversation. You know, I don't know how to answer that. It's a, it's mm. a great issue because the law specifically says that it's not allowed, but I don't know. I mean, you know, I, I could see it happening just to secure a roof over your head. Um, you know, the other thing that I want to point out for landlords, you know, because we're, we're giving everybody pointers, right? What I, what the situations that I see is we have like two or three different tenants who are putting, you know, a lot of people right now are pulling their income together and running a place because they can't afford to do it on their own, mm -hmm. right? What I'm finding, and this is for me, something that I really look at, people who share, but they're just friends or they just know each other, but they've never rented together before. And now all of a sudden, you know, in order to afford a place, they're going to get together and rent and share the rent. I find that for me, the red flag is after three months, six months, they decided they hate living together. Yep. You know, my best friend is just irritating me to death or whatever. Oh, yeah. They, yeah. they, they have, you know, people who share, not not everybody, but it we call, does we call that the trouble in paradise arrangement, right? <laughs> yeah, and and they think it's okay. Well, I'm moving out because you know I don't. I've decided to move off island, or I don't mm -hmm. like my best friend anymore. I like him. I like my friend as a friend, but not to live with. Yeah. And now all of a sudden, I want to move out and go back wherever, or find my own place, a cheap place that I could just afford. The thing is, you qualified together. That's what made it. That's what pushed you into the financial realm of, uh -huh. of affording the unit. But now one person moves out and the other two can't afford it. And I think it the mindset is, well, the landlord's just going to let us out of the lease because our friend moved out. We can't afford it. Well, you know, we're all adults. You make the decision to do this together. Now you have to live with the consequences. Once again, it, it came, it came from the very mouth of our own Gina Campos. They don't set the price. They give advice because, because trust me, if there's one thing you guys can always rely on, and I knew this way before we started the show together, you never truly know somebody until you live with them. Until you live with them. <laughs> yeah, but the problem with that is they're all stuck. So if they can't um, live together and one vacates, their name was on the lease. They're liable for the lease. All three of the parties are liable for the lease. And the landlord could still go after them for for the monies that are due All right well i always advise the tenants there is no breakup clause in the lease agreement <laughs> well, it, is a, it is it is a relationship whether it be professional or personal or co cohabitating or whatever like that so like in real estate, as in life and everything, it's all about managing your relationship. So ladies, I'm glad I have a very productive relationship with the both of you because you you guys are really, really, you guys are doing the Lord's work when it comes to like real estate, truly. So thank you very much, both of you. Thank you. Thank Gina, you, was Jason. That a, was that a smile I just evoked from you, Gina? I was going to say, I'm not sure if it's the Lord's work, but it's certainly real estate. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to end on a good note with both of them smiling because we, we don't want to get them talking about politics again because we'd be here for like two hours. So our right, religion. Ladies. <laughs> Ladies, thank you so much. Bye. Thank you, Jason. Have a good week, everybody. We'll see you next time. You too. Bye.